When we passed our plus two, they said there's only two branches, medical or engineering. When we passed our BSc, they said only one way, do your masters. When we passed our masters, people said there's only one way, do your PhD. Well, I'm fed up of this one way. The truth is, there is no one way. There are 12 ways, more than 12 ways. There are a million ways to build your successful career in biosciences. So today I want to break that myth. No, I have no personal animity with CSIR net. I'm going to be neutral. CSIR net and PhD is one of the very good options which you can opt for. But if you want to build your career in research, but what if you don't want to do that? What if you want to do something else? And that something else also should yield money at the end, job satisfaction at the end, and also a good life to you in the biotech sector. Is biotech sector all about PhD and a research career? No, that is one of the careers, but there are 12. In fact, these are just broad ones. In, inside of all of this, there are multiple other ways you can build your career. So let's start today's session by looking at the first point, which is passion matters. So boss, no matter who you are, no matter which part of the country you belong to, no matter which subject you like, my personal opinion is if you are not passionate about the subject, you are not going to succeed. Now, having said that, if I say, okay, I'm passionate about cell biology, but there is no much of cell biological research going on, then okay, you can go for abroad or maybe in India, wherever it's happening, you should go there. Maybe not in your city, some other city, do that. But when it comes that, okay, my passion is not at all in research. My passion is into something else. My strong point is something else. Then what should I do? That is where I want to tell you that only CSIR net and PhD is not the only solution. There are multiple other solutions, but you have to be passionate about whatever I'm going to show. Because if you are not passionate about it, you're just doing it for money. You're eventually going to fail because money at some point in time st stops coming. See, the economy runs in cycles of up and down. So when it is going up, you'll enjoy the money. But when it is going down, only your passion will keep you alive. That's how it is. No matter whether you're in a government job or a private job, you if whether you are in a uh, research job or a non-research job in the biotech sector or any other sector, this is the truth. Your economy will go up and come down, then go up and then come down. This is a cycle, right? Now, when you when it is going up, you are enjoying. When money is not coming, you stop enjoying, and that is where you'll start quitting your jobs. That's not the solution. The solution is to follow. Your passion. Once you have passion, when you once you identify your passion, everything else will follow. Now, second point, of course, now you must be eager. The first pointer was, of course, passion. Once you have the passion, then you you have the first point here that is science journalism. Now, you see, there are very less magazines and media companies in exclusively for biotech sector, but there are multiple media companies across the globe. Right. And they all write articles. They all cover news based on science. And thankfully, after COVID, even more, whether it is CNBC, whether it is CNN, whether it is uh, NDTV, all these, you know, companies. So you can actually, after your master's, probably do a diploma in journalism. You don't need to do another master's. A diploma in journalism also, or maybe just a certification will also do as long as you are good in communication that will matter. So science journalism is one career. In fact, we personally, I personally hire a lot of science journalists for Biotechnica. If you are one uh, who are in, who is interested, you can always approach Biotechnica to do an internship or a job in science journalism because science as a subject needs to be spoken, right? So if you're good in English, if you're good in communication, then science journalism is one amazing topic, but don't touch it unless you are passionate about it because, you know, passion matters. The next point is, of course, formulation and development. So, the, you know, uh, research is different and formulation is different. Okay. Research and development is where you are doing research for the first time. Now, formulation is where, is where you already have a SOP. So, when you already have a SOP, all you have to do is follow the process, right? Or QAQC also. So, follow the process. You don't need a PhD for that. You just need to follow the process. So FND is also formulation and development is also a very good field where you don't require a PhD, but of course you can 
thrive, survive and grow in this field. So that's th the third point. Move on to the fourth point is science communication. Now you'll be like, sir, science journalism and science communication are different or are the same? Actually, broadly speaking, both look the same, but there is a difference. Science communication is where you are editing manuscript, uh, uh, you know, writing research papers, editing research papers, something like that. So that's also a, a profession. There are multiple companies in India as well as globally, which you know, uh, gets has got into science communication and you can make a career there. Now, the fifth one, evergreen, lot of money, sales and marketing. And especially in biotech sector, you have so many companies. So there are R&D is in US, their R&D team is in Europe, their R&D team is in Japan, but they are having the product, they want to sell it in India. There are multiple such companies I know, okay. And since I, uh, on a daily basis, I sit with a lot of uh, biotech industry CEOs, biotech industry companies and uh, marketing teams. So I know sales and marketing is a very important part of in any company. And you can make a lot of money given that you have good communication, you have a passion for sales, you have a passion to meet strangers and convince them about your ideas. So yeah, sales and marketing is one amazing profession where you can make your career and you, and you don't need a PhD or a CSIR net for that. Next one is leadership positions. So this is again very interesting. So uh, just uh, two days back, I got a call from a biotech startup. He's ready to give 30 lakh per annum salary to a person who has 10 years of leadership experience, right? So how do you become a leader? You have to start from scratch. So whatever position you're getting, maybe a research analyst, maybe a uh, very low position, but slowly you climb the ladder over a period of 10 years. So now you are in the top notch leadership position, right? And once you have that, you can always, you know, switch to a bigger company or a smaller company and get that leadership positions. So this is also a very good idea. And I'll tell you the trick here. So if you are in a small company at a leadership position, you can always switch to a bigger company and showcase your talent of achievement and get there as a, in the team, top level team of leadership. Or if you're in top company leadership team already, you can switch to a smaller company and take the CEO or CSO role. That also you can take and you don't need a PhD for that. Leadership positions are amazing positions. In fact, I'll tell you, I have people in my company working for 10, 12, 15 years now. They all started at the bottom scratch level, right? But they were all masters or bachelors in biotech. And then they slowly climbed the ladder. Today, they are at the topmost level, right? They never needed a PhD, but they are the most reliable guys if I have to look forward to. So that's what leadership is all about. So management and leadership positions also, you can make a career. The next one which I have for you is market research. So market research is something, there are a lot of market research companies as well as a lot of investors do market research. And that's something nobody tells you. For example, Bain & Company or any company um, like uh, uh, Simon Santo, if they want to create or get into one market, They'll first do this market research, right? So either they will do it on their own or they will outsource it to some market uh, research company. So market research companies are there in Bangalore also, across India also, across the globe also. You can get in there as a you know business analyst or a uh, research analyst and then you get data and then you analyze and then you come to a uh, you know, uh, conclusion. For example, somebody says that biotech industry will be a $200 billion industry by 2030. Now, who gets you that, that data? The research analysts will do it. They will combine, compile and they produce the results. So that's market research for you. Next one, which I have for you again, very interesting here is medical writing. You all know medical writing, Kelly, you don't need a PhD. But one very important thing which I want to tell you is eventually medical writing field as such is going to die. For, for now, it is there. So it's, you cannot make a durable um, um, job or a durable career here but yeah this is one of the options which you have medical writing right now there is a lot of money here but in future it may not be there a lot of companies are there in Chennai and Mumbai as well as Bangalore for medical writing the next one is science policy now what is science policy you see government is there so government has a department called department of science and technology department of biotechnology or BIRAC or uh, you know Bangalore Bio Innovation Center so what are these these are organizations which are involved in policy making, even able association of biotechnical led enterprises. So they, they are involved in policy ma making process. So what they do here, right? For example, lab safety protocols, right? 
So now the IAS officer in this sitting in this DST will not know all this, right? So he'll always outsource it to someone who is a specialist who has got the idea. So you can get into the science policy as an intern in DST and DBT, and then slowly you can climb up the ladder and who knows, you could be the chief of, uh, you know, uh, a big team there. So yeah, science policy is one thing and it's a government job. Okay, so that's also a very good thing. That's another uh, advantage here. Now let's move on to the 10th one, which I have for you is bioinformatics. Of course, if you do a PhD in bioinformatics, it's separate, but even if you don't do a PhD in bioinformatics, you can get a very good, decent uh, income because see, bioinformatics is not a, uh, it's a skill. It's not a degree, right? There's a difference. See, bioinformatics is a field. It's a skill that you can analyze things and you can scale it up using data. So. Bioinformatics as such is an amazing field you can always choose and grow and you don't need a PhD for this. All you, all you need is skill set, right? So that's where bioinformatics comes into picture. The next one which, which we have is clinical research. So what's clinical research? I'm sure you must have seen the ads of Clini India, right? Clini, in Clini India is a leading uh, clinical research training organization. And what, what they do, they first train you and then they place you in the uh, market in various companies and various companies uh, will hire you and they will send you in the field to collect data and you know uh, do, uh, perform the clinical research. So that's where clinical research is again a field for which you don't need a PhD, probably a diploma or an online degree will be sufficient to get started. But please make sure, please do your background research before joining any institute, including Clean India, because of course I know they have placements, but still. It's my recommendation that any institute you join in clinical research because they're they where once upon a time there were a lot of frauds in clinical research. So you please do your due diligence. However, I can definitely personally recommend Clean in India, which is in Bangalore. They have amazing online classes also and online uh, diplomas also for you, which you can check out. Now, the last one for all of you is entrepreneurship, which is me. See, my, my profession is entrepreneurship combined with science journalism, right? So what do I do? Of course, I am a teacher. I I'm a mentor. Of course, I wear a lot of hats, but entrepreneurship is one among them. So entrepreneurship is a very rewarding, very satisfying uh, career, but you can't just directly step in here. Okay. Of course I did, but then I learned it the wrong way that I'm going the wrong way. You can't just directly step into entrepreneurship. Slowly you have to build. Okay. You have to identify the passion. You have to identify the product you want to build and then you uh, you have to sell that product into, into the market with the help of a team. So that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Entrepreneurship or intrapreneurship, both are enablers of the economy, both are required for the you know, economy. So whether you are an employee or an entrepreneur does not matter as long as you have the passion, which is the first point. If you have the passion here to do whatever you want to do. So these were the 11 professions, which according to me are not bad. They're very good professions, very rewarding professions. I didn't include teacher because, you know, sometimes, of course, for teacher, you need a PhD. But yeah, you can become a teacher without a PhD also. You just need a beard. So these are the rewarding, most rewarding careers where, uh, in fact, you could be earning even more than the PhDs. That's that's the truth. That's a um, truth we should, which you should know. But uh, at the end of the day, it's not the money which you earn. It's the satisfaction which you earn. You know, at the end of your, our life, there will be two options. One will be thinking that, did I live my everyday life in a different way? Or did I live my life in the same way every day? Right? If the answer is you lived as a rocks coffee of your every day, then that's not life. Life should be where you have job satisfaction, where you enjoyed your work. And then you, your every day was different. Every day you did new things, new challenges, newer innovations. Okay. So I think these are the jobs which we have right now. But in future, newer jobs are going to come up. Who knows? So stay put. And like I said, said the future jobs like gene editing uh, and all that stuff is going to come synthetic biology. So for that, that's a topic for another day. For now, I'll uh, stop here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you liked it. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. And of course, if you want any kind of personal guidance, I'm always here. My email ID is shaker at biotechnica.org. Every student email who emails me gets a reply almost within 24 hours to 48 hours. And um, I've been doing that for the past 17 years and I would love to do that for the next part of my life. If you have any questions, drop me an email. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.